Well, welcome along to a very special episode of LS11 uh, with myself, Darren Harper, and of course, our resident rock star, Ryan Wilson. Um, and today we're broadcasting from Sheffield for this special episode, chatting to one of the all-time managerial legends of Leeds United and still the last English manager to have coached the team to the English League Championship title. Howard Wilkinson, thank you so much for joining us on LS11. Thank you for coming. No, Thank you. my pleasure. Absolute pleasure to, to be here, Howard. Um, we, we, we've got loads of questions for you that have been sent in, and we're going to get to uh, some of those. Um, uh, but uh, first of all, your relationship with Leeds United. How did that actually start? How did, how did Leeds United approach you to become their manager? I was at Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, had been there five years, I think, um, maybe just over five years. Uh, got them promoted in the first year there and then we were in the, what was then the first division. I got a phone call from a very good journalist friend of mine uh, who asked me uh, or who'd been asked to ask me would I be interested in joining Leeds United who I think were then second or third bottom in the division below Sheffield Wednesday. Um, so on the face of it, a stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I said no. I then got another phone call from him again, saying I've been asked to ring you again. Um, they're very, very serious about this. Um, they'd just like the chance to speak to you. So I eventually gave in and what then followed was, so this was September and I joined in October, early September. Uh, what followed was a series of conversations, first with Bill Fotherby and then, and most importantly, with Leslie Silver, who was then chairman. And over the course of my four meetings with Len Leslie uh, in, in his office to his uh, company which was then called Kalon, a paint company which is he was on the verge of selling. Um, came back down to Sheffield and announced to my wife that I'm going to Leeds United and her response was what? <laughs> you must be crazy. <laughs> Why? Um, and the why was Leslie, after these four, four meetings, Leslie and Bill before him, but more Leslie in the end because it was Len Leslie who was providing the financial support. Um, I'd walked out of his office um, with both of us agreeing to a, a long-term future for Leeds United. Uh, which would see Leeds United out of the division um, the next season. But then I'd said that we could then look at winning the title maybe four years after that, after we'd consolidated. And that's a very short story to what was a very long story because what we talked about was the the club in, in the total sense. So we talked from top to bottom, from first team to youth team, talked about and agreed to uh, a new training ground, um, which included facilities for what I thought was the best way to, to bring young players up, a new concept where we, we actually had them living on the premises at the training ground and we had a partnership with a, a local school. In the end, at that time, all this was just in theory. Um, and and the, 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 the end of the meeting, the final meeting, was basically um, his last question to me, or my last statement to him was, so before I go, uh, as you know now, we've we've talked at the about I've talked to you about the different 
things we can do, the different things we need to do. Um, now you've got a decision, which is, do you want this the quick way or the slow way? And he said, what's the difference? And I said, about three to four million pound possibly, which would be initially money provided by you if it were necessary for us to take steps in the transfer market to move things forward and were, if those steps were going to be hefty in terms of finance because at that time they didn't own the ground, uh, council owned the ground so they, the only assets they had were the team. Mm. Um, so Leslie who was a, a lovely man, a self-made man, a man of his word, a gentle person uh, his manner was very gentle, but he had a backbone and, and balls of steel. Um, so we, we, we bonded and uh, I spoke to the chairman at the Sheffield Wednesday. They were very understanding as to why I wanted to make this crazy move um, and reluctantly agreed to release me. But, but all that took about, that was all over about the course of five weeks. Was, was it important to you then, uh, going in and, and knowing where Leeds United were, to have that sort of influence sort of like from top to bottom and, and, and look at the, the, the whole club, not just the playing side, but the whole club? Well, it, yes, it was, but it was a different time. Uh, but, but the concept would, would, was quite modern in the sense that... that um, the club would be a club that, that had a, a plan going forward and there would be stages in that plan that it would be comprehensive, it would be understandable and that it would require consistency, it would require good staff in place and good staff would be in place for as long as it took and it required Leslie's intelligence and faith to have sat through all these meetings, listened to all our discussions and thought, well, this is different to the football, the way football works as I've experienced it. What he had experienced was a, a thing that basically focused on the first team, the results and, and, and the manager and the chairman really not having any underst any real understanding of this thing, this mystery called football. Um, and what I tried to show him was that football has differences, but fundamentally it, it's very similar to business. Mm. And that uh, a good business needs a good leader, and a good leader needs good staff, and the leader and the staff need to understand what they're doing and where they're going and how they're going to get there and feel part of it and so he that was new to him and he liked that having made a business himself coming out of the RAF flying Lancasters buying borrowing from the government and mixing paint in a garage to owning a factory down the road, um, so he bought into that, you know, um, and I came from a Jewish background, and he's, I think it was his grandparents had come over from Russia, uh, so he had, the Leslie I met was not the Leslie that came out of the RAF, and it wasn't the Le Leslie who was brought up in London's East End. Um, so he, he, you know, it, 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 this wasn't a, him understanding something that was intangible, uh, he'd lived that story. Yeah, it's a, it's an, it is, it is fantastic when, when, when you first got there, and I'm, I'm intrigued as well about um, what that first few weeks was like, but, because you, you, you're very much a disciplinarian when it came to sort of management, and 
what was the discipline like at, at Leeds United when, when you were, first went in there? What well, did you I, have to do? People say I'm a disciplinarian. I, I, um, I don't think, I don't think uh, wanting people to be honest, wanting people to commit to the job, uh, wanting people to turn up on time, um, wanting people to respect one another, wanting people to understand the concept of the team, and the team, a good team will have its rules, and, and the nature of the team is such that we've all agreed that these are the right rules. So if that's discipline, then I'm a disciplinarian. I just think, <laughs> you know, uh, we all have to be rowing in the same direction. When you um, took over at Leeds United, did you feel any added pressure kind of taking the role on from, from a legend like Billy Bremner, for example? Because obviously Billy's still a legend at Leeds United today. We, we see the statue mm. of people still talk fondly of him and there's quotes of Billy in, in the stadium. Did that kind of, was any of that playing on your mind when you took over Leeds United? No, not really. Um, uh, le uh, Billy was, was a, as you've just said, a great player, a legend whose achievements w were absolutely unbelievable. Um, a world-class player at, at mm. that time mm. and, a, and a leader. So, but that was Billy on the pitch. I was not taking over from Billy on the pitch. Mm. I was taking over from Billy in the office. Mm. Uh, and those are two different jobs. You know, I once very early on in my coaching career asked Don Howe, Don, what's it, what difference does it make having been a great player when you start coaching and managing? And Bill had, Don had had a, a great career. And he said, about eight to ten games. <laughs> <laughs> right. Honeymoon period. Yeah. <laughs> You'll get eight to ten games more than someone who hadn't been a good player before you get the sack. Wow, yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, when you started to build your your own team, what were obviously you identified and, and brought in some some amazing players over over your tenure at Leeds United, and you know the the names roll off the tongue now when you look at Gordon Strachan, Vinnie Jones, Lee Chapman, Chris Fairclough. Um, they were Mel Sterland, all, all instrumental in what you were trying to achieve at the club. What? Players did you first identify that you needed to bring in when you first got there? Well, it wasn't players I identified because they, they, they were, they, I think they were, I can't remember, the third, fourth, bottom or whatever, but, but they, they hadn't had a good start. No. And I'd, I'd seen them play a few times. Uh, I've been able to get hold of uh, video where possible, which was not easy in those times. And the players were better than the results. If you looked at the players individually and you looked at the performances and the results, there was no comparison. The sum of the ability of the players would allow you to think that they should be doing better than this. So changing that round was not difficult. It, it, it was introducing. And you come with the benefit of, of your new and everybody thinks we've all got a chance. Um, that was the first thing I said to them was, when I met them was, having had all these meetings with Leslie, I said, there's a, there's a passenger jet on the runway and it will take off next summer. And everybody in this dressing room can be on that plane. There's a seat for everyone, but, but you have to earn that seat. Uh, so it wasn't wasn't as if there wasn't enough there. There was enough there to do better than they were doing. And that's what we did. I think we went on a quite a run. <laughs> I think we I think the first game was Peterborough, which I watched, and then in the league, I remember going to Bradford, but I, I can't remember whether it was it was double figures unbeaten. Uh and that was just that was just giving people, well, giving them, giving them the, the big picture about the team, and then and then individuals knowing the jobs, what 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 the team expects of you. Um, so that made a difference. 
and uh, that gave me then that start gave me the opportunity because things had changed for the better that gave me the opportunity to uh, uh, look around but not in any panicky way at what we'd need for next season and where we might get it and who would be the best but as it as always happens in football or reg regularly happens in football opportunities do arise you do have big disappointments at times and then on the other times there are huge opportunities and I got a phone call from again the same reporter that rang me about the job you should saying, have been your agent <laughs> saying uh, well it, 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 him and I struck up a, a, a friendship which went beyond that, you know, our families met, uh, met um, which was unusual at the time, mm. but, but I trusted him and, uh, uh, and knew that uh, whatever he did, he, he did in my best interest um, as much as his in terms of the newspaper. Uh, so I got a phone call from him saying, did I know uh, Gordon Strachan was at uh, Sheffield Wednesday? Uh, talking to Ron Atkinson, I said no, but if you have are able to connect with him, tell him, and or give us the phone numbers, tell him not to sign for them until he's signed for us. Because you asked me earlier on, what 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 was I looking for? Well, first and foremost, I was looking for a leader, someone. So it, it wasn't a centre-half or a midfield player or a striker. It was at the first signing, if possible, I wanted someone to come in who immediately could reflect my values on the football pitch. And having seen Gordon, having seen his career uh, up in Scotland and, and later down at Man U, I thought that he might be that person. Yeah, you, you, you had a fair few leaders on that pitch in the end, didn't you, really? <laughs> well, uh, you, you know, leadership's in, in, important. And in the end of the day, you want them all to be leaders. Yeah. And, and a good example was Gary Speed. I had to talk to Gary in his, when he was 20, 21. And let's see, say he maybe was living the life that his film star looks <laughs> suggested he might leave and um, and that and that was totally different to Gary the footballer and Gary the person with regard to his job and I said to him you you have every th you have all the qualities uh, to become a very good player to become a leader and he laughed at that one he thought never um, one because your values are good too because in terms of the football side you 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 turn up you do what's necessary and more uh, so you do everything right so uh, even now there'll be teenagers looking at you in this football club who think I might do worse than copy Gary Speed but not outside of football so and I said to him if you if you start to live the life uh, you'll play till you're 34 35 and he was like no, no chance but I'd said the same to Gordon I'd said to Gordon when we talked to him I got the sense that Gordon felt that that his best physical times had gone and I said no no that's not true that's not true um, you can you can you can get fitter than you are now and you can sustain your career for longer than you think you can. Just because other people retire when they're 33, why, do, why does that make you? You've got to retire. Everybody's different and everybody has the opportunity to be different. So, at least he, he, although he was already into looking after himself in terms of his uh, diet, at least he learned that, that you can get fitter when you're that age providing you're guided by people who understand the process. Mm. Again, everybody's different. You train a 33-year-old different to what you train a 
18 year old, but the principles are the same. Mm -hmm. And it's 360 degrees, it's not just at the training ground. Yeah. So when you brought in people like Gordon Strachan, did the whole squad buy into the ethos of what you were trying to do when you first came to Leeds United? No, with any no they don't, didn't all buy into the ethos. Yeah. Um, were there many sort of issues with, with many players? Well, there were people, there, there were people um, who, who um, disagreed or maybe their, their instincts or their lifestyle or their, their, their objectives weren't weren't um, the same as mine uh, and some found they couldn't maybe uh, face up to what we required of them. So you have to find that out fairly quickly because, you know, I think that um, in the, in, in the foot, in the plain sense, you get, you get leaders who create energy within the dressing room within the training, they create energy themselves. Their, their leadership spreads and, and they take responsibility not only for their performance, but their other people's performances. Mm -hmm. um, then you've got, the, you've got the people who are the followers, who are good guys, uh, and just latch onto this and say, hey, you know, <laughs> this is for me, I like this. And everybody's different. I'm not saying you're not a leader, so therefore, you know, good. I'm saying that that bloke's got leadership qualities naturally. You not so, but but both of you want the same end result. Uh, but you're different. And then there are those who who drain energy, uh, and they they're in every workplace. They drain energy from the place, you know. Yeah. And the trouble with those is that the old saying is misery loves company. <laughs> so they're True. not happy being miserable on their own. Yeah. They want to make sure that you are miserable. They'll, so rather than pat you on the back and say, come on, it, it, it'll get better, they'll tell you it's his fault. You're all right. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. Wait, uh, what, what type was Vinnie Jones? Vinnie was... I, I had a long chat with... Uh, Dave Bassett, um, over a couple of meals and on a, another occasion at that, our house, because Dave lived within half a mile of, of here. And I talked to him about Vinny, uh, just in, as a, a player and his reputation. Um, and I quickly learned from David that, that his reputation, whilst a lot of people would say was earned, his reputation didn't mirror what was really Vinnie Jones. That he was a leader, that he was prepared uh, to take responsibility, that there was more to him than just the antics that most people saw on the pitch. Uh, that he had a good football brain, he was intelligent. Um, and for instance, I didn't know, but that that Vinny actually was a he, he was a great man for the field and fair. He went shooting. Mm -hmm. He knew a lot about nature and animals, and he had interest in that. Uh, so I thought that's useful, and it, <laughs> and it worked out well because he'd occasionally bring me a pheasant in, or a <laughs> <laughs> on occasion a woodcock. I've only ever had two. Um, <laughs> So Vinny, Vinny came and was uh, was unbelievable. And of course, the, the the good thing with that is, he's unbelievable because they expect this, but they don't get this. They get that. So Vinny was the uh, Vinny could could lift a room. Uh, he could lift an office. He'd frequently come back in the afternoon with a bag of cakes for the ladies in the offices and whatever. Um, so he, uh, he, he had two sides, but, mm. but, you know, there was a gentle side, but there's also another side which said, you know, you hurt me or you hurt my mate and you might pay for it. 
<laughs> <laughs> what was uh, Vinny like in training? Did, did you have to have a time to calm down because you didn't want Gordon Strachan's legs being no. broken? <laughs> you know, so, no. Or was, was, was he only kind of like, you know, no, he, what he, that he, Vinny was, the pre-season we had, he was, he was by, you know, but fitness, fitness, fitness was measured at that time at, at Leeds United. I measured, we measured fitness. Me and my staff measured fitness, not as accurately as they can now. But but there were there were measurements that you could take. There were tests you could do that gave you an idea of he's fitter than him. Blah 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 what his fitness should be and what it is now and therefore we have room for improvement and Vinny was uh, Vinny was up there top man you know anything that demanded physical effort anything that demanded determination he was right in there and the other good thing about him in those situations is he would all also encourage others who were you know he'd be the one saying hey come on Come on, you can do it. So, um, different, mm. different to the image, and therefore a leader, a plus, mm. a plus. Um, he was, you know, I'll do it. If you ask the question, volunteers, I'll do it. Or, uh, but he was also humble. He did. He'd sit and listen. So totally different to that image, and once he got surrounded by people who were of the same th so same set of thoughts, he loved it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I've said this before. I've said it to him. Uh, really, I shouldn't let him go. Mm. I should have kept him well, for his value, value to the football club yeah. and. And as I said to him, as I said, uh, and I think he would have been made a good manager. Hmm. And he thanked me for that decision, looking back, because he said, I'm now a film star, <laughs> and I earn more in a week, and you'll learn in a year. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and it's nowhere near as hard. No, I can imagine not. Well, he just plays a lot of golf in LA at the moment. Seems uh, from, to. From what I um, read of him at the moment, but fair play to him. He is a family man as well. Yeah. Yeah, very yeah, strong. Definitely. Mm -hmm. it, that, that 92 team, is, is, is that the best team you've ever managed or coached? Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I started off at Boston United which was in Division 5, you'd call it now, the Vauxhall Conference. And we had five years, I think we won the championship three times and so on. But went to Derby, who uh, had won the championship the year before in the third or fourth round of the Cup and drew nil-nil at the baseball round, got walloped three days after, 6-1 or 5-1. Uh, on a Tuesday afternoon, because it was the time of the power strikes and oh, and the nice. old days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could just about raise a gallop in the second game. But 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 Boston, we we were the best tier five team in England. Um, and then at Notts County, I was just there at a dinner on Saturday. We got promoted the first season, but but we we played a totally different way to Sheffield Wednesday or Leeds. You play according to the players you've got or the players you can get. And at Notts County, we were we played with it. We, we were the first team in England, I think, to play with a proper sweeper. And we were the goalkeeper, a Yugoslav, a Yugoslav at that time, named Avramovic, Radi Avramovic. His distribution was unbelievable, feet and hands, and. At Notts County in that first season, he was not allowed to kick the ball unless it was a goal kick, or he had to every other time. And in fact, on Saturday night, I was reminded um, there was a goal we scored at Ipswich away, Bobby Robson's team, where Raddy had it, threw it out, and 
I don't know, it's 13 or 15 short passes later, it was a one-touch finish into the goal. And uh, Bob actually got out the dugout and came over because I knew Bob. We'd worked together with Ron Greenwood and, and shook my hand and said, I uh, can't believe what I've just seen. So, <laughs> wow. but, but that's because I, I, I looked at them and that's what we had. Mm -hmm. We had people who could all pass and control, mostly. At Sheffield Wednesday it was different and then it, again at Leeds. And I was pleased. Two weeks ago when uh, we, the League Managers Association, organised a Q&A with Pep Guardiola at Man City. And he basically said the same. The question was your way of playing or your philosophy. And he said, my way of playing is the way which I think caters for my best players. At Barcelona, I had Messi. We attacked through the middle. At Bayern Munich, I had Ribery and Robin. We attacked wide. At Man City, I've been fortunate to have been given time to bring in players uh, who I thought were capable of playing a certain way. So that's how I see it. I, I, I don't see that you go into a football club and say, I like to play this way. I think your job is to say to them, what I like to do is find a way that suits all of you. And I think that's the best way for us to win football matches. Mm. Um, w winning the title uh, that year and, uh, and bringing that back to Leeds. And obviously, uh, the last day of the season, I mean, I'm from Bournemouth, so uh, everybody... It was, it was very busy in that, that weekend in, in Bournemouth, as I, as I, as I remember. Um, but what taking the title back to uh, Leeds, and I've seen obviously videos of what that was like with the open top bus tour. That must have been just, just an amazing. Uh, uh, yeah, time. I mean, it, it's it's Leeds is a is is a one club city, and one club cities have an enormous advantage if they if they do get it going, um, and you see the benefits of it when things are going well. You also see the downside when things aren't going well. <laughs> but when things are going well, um, you see the benefits. And, of course, on top of that as well, there are benefits for the city. I mean, Manchester now is just... It's unbelievable. The change that's mm. taking place there. Now, I know that's not purely down to Alex Ferguson and Pep Guardiola, but undoubtedly thousands coming in from all over the country and some from out of the country to watch them must have a positive impact on the welfare and and and, and the well-being of a city so yeah it was um we were exploiting that and obviously i didn't know it at first but you soon recognize it that a call for help when you're a one club city um, is answered a lot more quickly than if you're a two club city in the sense that every second person you ask will say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It seems like it's sort of getting close to that as well. 100%. I mean, um, I, I'm Ellen Road every Leeds United home game and the, the last sort of probably 10, 10 games or so, they've been complete sellouts, like, like they were back in the Premier League days. And, you know, away tickets are, are very difficult to come by. And I kind of sort of going back to what you're saying about the One City Club, now Leeds United are kind of getting back to some of that form and glory. That's kind of happening. The, the, the stadium's sold out. People are talking about it in Leeds. I mean, I've done a, a few interviews about the football club and one of the things I kind of said, which is what you kind of said there, Howard, about Manchester, I said, I think the city needs a Premier League club as mm. well. And So when you sort of t took over Leeds United and you kind of mentioned you're speaking to Leslie, etc., Leeds obviously had a fantastic history in, in the 70s, etc., but mm. was that one of the, the key things to get Leeds back to, to where they belong, you know, to get... Um, get the city to have a top division club again, and and was that you know were you you were all on the same sort of page in and this, aiming in the same direction to do that? Well, I don't think you do any different to any other club, whether there's two or three, one, two, three, four, five clubs in the city. It, mm. it, the methods are the same. It's just the response 
uh, and uh, for me, um, having played um, at Sheffield Wednesday and then down at Brighton, um, I hadn't experienced any of that as a player. Um, basically, because I wasn't good enough. You know, mm. in football terms, you know, you've got your architects and you've got your bricklayers labourer. I was the bricklayers labourer, um, but. No, it's it's a it's just a fight. Mm. One club is the focus of every football loving family in that city. So it, it definitely has. There is a definite advantage. Yeah. If you give them what they want, mm. you've got no competition. Yeah. Give them what they want, you've got no competition. So I noticed it early on because if I said to Bill Fotherby, who was Leslie's right hand man and my left hand man. Um, if I said to Bill, Bill, we need, whereas normally it might take two weeks, a month, six weeks to get we need, whether that was a sponsored car or a sponsorship, Bill would be almost back inside. If he wasn't back in 48 hours, you, you wondered where he was. Mm -hmm. he'd, he'd come in and, you know, but that was also down to his personality, by the way, which yeah. was, he was a born salesman. Mm. Um, Gordon's famous story is right about Bill. Gordon went into the office to negotiate a new contract and came out finding out he'd sponsored a game. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, I've heard that before, yeah. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> we, story. Yeah, we both followed yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I, I did have a question on the sponsorship because there's uh, many, many photos of you during that period with the famous Flying Pizza baseball cap. Um, do you still have the Flying Pizza baseball cap? I don't know, but I did see Adriano at Bill's funeral. Adriano came over from Tenerife, where he spends half of his life. Uh, Adriano Piazzaroli. And we became good friends. Our families became good friends. Um, and we've spent time over there. We, at Bill's funeral, we had photographs of times on the beach at Forte di Marmi, where uh, Adriano had a house. Um, with our children, their children, Bill Fotherby and so on, because we'd gone out there to play a game and Sam and Ben had followed us and uh, spent some time there. Um, so I don't know whether I have it or not, but <laughs> I've got it on on a photo somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he was a great bloke. He ran a great restaurant. Um, and uh, I, I, I learned again about businesses. Adriano kept, I was in Leeds, I don't know, seven years, eight years. And more or less, the chefs and the waiters were all the same. How many restaurants do you walk into where that is the case? Mm. And the reason for that was, despite him being a hard taskmaster, for instance, you know, he paid his staff well. Um, some of them were looked after, say, cars or whatever. Um, so look after the players and they'll look after you. Um, so he was a good bloke in, in a very different way to me. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, we sort of touched on it, there's a lot of comparisons between the sort of like the 92 season and this season sort of in particular. It's sort of centenary year as well, so a lot of people are, are sort of, there's a lot of uh, hype around Leeds United this year especially. Um, have you been impressed with what's been happening with Leeds United this season? Yeah, football's hard. Getting results are hard. The Championship is a hard league. Everybody talks about Anybody can beat anybody. I mean, you, this, you start the Premier League season and you can nearly group the Premier League into three groups. Mm. OK, Leicester broke the mould and so on. Mm. But you can actually go, <clears throat> bump, they'll be up there thinking, we've got a chance in Europe. Bump, they'll be there thinking, FA Cup, 
Carabao Cup or whatever, uh, and maybe a chance at the Europa Cup. But also to be thinking, we've also got to think about relegation. And then you'll have another group, six, seven, eight, who are all saying, our target for this season is 40 points, as quickly as we can get it. Whereas the Championship, the number of clubs who think we might get into the Premier League, either directly or via the playoff, is far more than eight. Mm. And the other thing I think about the Championship is um, I see a lot of teams playing, trying to play like Manchester City. Um, but they haven't got Aguero or De Bruyne <laughs> yeah. and so on. Um, so I see a lot of teams playing their way to the attacking third. But then the key to unlock the box isn't there. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes games are put at risk because of that. But it's a hard league. Yeah, I, don't, I think there's, there's no doubt about that. As no, as we, certainly we've seen in the last, even the last yeah. few weeks, really. Yeah. I mean, um, look, at, look at Brad's at Bristol City, Lee Thompson. I mean, really, if, if you compare some of the clubs that they're dealing with around them, mm. but, you know, then they, they, they started well and then they had a, and now he'll be thinking, they'll be thinking, could we? Mm. <laughs> yeah, definitely right there so what's your thoughts on Marcelo Bielsa this season at Leeds I mean as a Leeds fan we're, we're kind of seeing him um, transform players that were seemed very average last season into you know essentially world beaters at that level um, so. well I don't know him so mm. I can only judge by what I see yeah and what you see is 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 actually very little mm. I mean the game you see the game but the game's like an iceberg. Mm. The game is one seventh of what's going on um, beneath the water. So, and that bit's the important bit. Mm. What goes on in that time there is the important time. And I don't know, because I don't see that. Yeah. I read about it, but you read different things. And so, so to judge, to judge a, a man in the in the 360 degree way when you don't have all the evidence mm. other than what you see on Saturday um, can be very difficult but what you what I have seen is a change mm. there's a change there's a change in results and the change in results has become of the fact that they have got a way of playing they've got a way of doing things which has made them better and you look at individuals, and again, I'm the wrong person to ask because I didn't see them play every game last season, and you need to do that to get mm. a good picture. But again, I listen to other people as well, and individuals are 10 or 12 or 15 or 8% better mm. than they were last season in terms of output. And by that I mean... You can get very complicated about players and how good they are. Um, but I think ultimately th th there are some simple measures. And, and So look at them game on game on game on game. What do you expect from him? What's his 10? If he's giving you his 8, his 7, his 9, week in, week out, you're OK. Mm -hmm. Especially if he's a Gary Speed who's not giving you other problems or a Gordon Strachan uh, but if you've got the bloke that's giving you nine one week and then other times it's five or six or whatever um, you've got a problem mm. one of the problems is sleeping Friday night because <laughs> the thing you said to yourself is can I trust him tomorrow Yeah. can I trust him tomorrow and you don't want too many question marks on Friday night when you just putting your head down. Is that if you can avoid it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that something that can be 
it coached any kind of con or, or helped consistency. Um, so we have seen it a lot this season with Leeds. Some players um, on form so, and one week and then the next week, the, the, the drop off form. And, you know, is that something that as a manager, as a coach, that you can try and help? Or, or is it a case of their mentality and their ability? Is it just as simple as that? I think if 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 a player if you sit down with a player and you settle for an agreed conclusion to the discussion or the discussions which is how good you can be and what will it take to make you that good what do you bring to the party because it's you who's got to do this, it's not me. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can try and be the catalyst, but ultimately it's you, it's how you think, whether you are able to say, I accurately think I can be that and I accurately think that I need to do this to get there. Um, and then it's down to you and everybody's different on that score. Mm -hmm. and, and football's different to working as a research chemist in some laboratory somewhere. Mm. It, different qualities are required. So being having football intelligence, uh, in my opinion, it, it's, a, it's, it's not an intelligence which is, as it were, oh, it's up there in that box there. If you want football intelligence, get it out of number 43. Yeah. But, <laughs> but Top performers do have this ability to to make good decisions. Mm. They do have this ability to to compute all these signals that are going on around them and come up with the best option. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean <laughs> mm. that they're they're, in, they're going to be able to join Mensa. Yeah. It's different. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so there's a bit of a problem sometimes, mm. but you know it, it's what 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 do you eat? what's good for you to eat, what's two and two mate, what's mm. the difference between right and wrong, um, and so on. How how do you think about the need for all of us to put a, a shift in every day, every mm. game? So it, it's that is a constant. That is a constant, um, a, a constant task, if you like, and, mm. and you're the bloke that, I mean, that's one of the problems with these short-term management things now, because to be a leader in the best sense, you've got to live all those values that you want them to demonstrate, because um, because you've got to be the model. Mm. You know, you can't afford to say one thing and do another. I don't think anyway. Mm. Um, so that's different. You know, I don't care what people say. Um, in some dressing rooms, this won't happen. You know, in some dressing rooms, a manager's under pressure. And what won't happen is that there will be players in that dressing room who think, well, he's under pressure, so he's going to go anywhere soon. Mm. But that is sometimes a thought. But then on the contrary, there are people who sit there thinking, well, he's under pressure. Hey, we need to do something about this mm. to make sure he's not under pressure because he's a decent bloke. He knows what he's doing. Um, and, you know, football is the most... It's, it's the, prof the one professional sport that is most open to chance mm. uh, and that's a proven fact mm. because in, in skill terms it's right at the open end of the skill continuum <coughs> and to, to, to eliminate chance or to reduce chance you need for a lot of end results so in basketball the best team wins because in football, you might get 10 strikes and not score any. In basketball, you might have 70 attempts at mm. goal. So you will score. 
a fair proportion of them. Okay. And there's no goalkeeper, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, I can imagine if there was. <laughs> and so on. Yeah. So, mm. on average, you, you saw it, you see, I've seen it with Man City. Look at the Wembley first off, how many strikes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, now the statistician will say to you at the end of the season, we need uh, for us to score a goal on average, it's every seven strikes, and we need three of them to be on target. Mm. But that's on average. Yeah. And that's after, if you're in the Champions League final, you've played 60 games. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but that average doesn't take account of that game where you have 10 strikes and you don't score. Mm. And they have two and they do. Mm. I saw the Crystal Palace Newcastle game on Saturday. And like pretty much any, any Leeds game this season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although yeah. we're in a fantastic Lots position, I'm not complaining, but we do have a lot of and chances. And, and, and that's, one of the, that's one of the, the, att the attractions of the, the striker. It's the strikers, and then there are strikers who, one, are good at getting into good positions, and two, whose finishing is, you know, 15, 20% mm -hmm. better than someone else's. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's no different in 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 other sports. But in the pro the problem with football, if, what you've either got to do in football is make the goal twice as big, <laughs> or say you can't have goalkeepers, <laughs> and then you'll still get <laughs> poor luck. But mm -hmm. so luck does play a big part. Yeah. Uh, we we've touched on Marcelo a little bit, sir, and. Um, I like your analogy about you only seeing the, the, the tip of the iceberg. He's, he does obviously do meticulous preparation. Um, and obviously earlier on this season, what they termed Spygate came out. Um, what, what were your thoughts? Do you, do you think that was blown out of proportion? Or what were your thoughts on that? Listen, what a preposterous question. The press don't blow things out of proportion, do they? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a smidgen. Maybe a smidgen sometimes. Gosh. Well, I never thought. <laughs> eh? The media blowing things out of all proportion. Mm. Some parts of the media, certainly. Mm. I don't know. Well, that's a good... It's a shocking statement. Hill. Away and have a long think about this one. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, when I, when I was managing... Going back to to not County, say. If we stayed in a hotel Friday night, and we say had a meeting on the Friday or a meeting on the Saturday, we we would frequently leave a team on the flip chart. Just won't be the team that was starting Saturday, <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> Excellent. Mm. I mean, you, you, I think, I think the biggest embarrassment about that we're getting caught, really, actually. But every manager seeking to gain, mm. uh, again, going right back to those stuff. When 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 agents first started to come in into the game, it, it, it quickly became amongst managers where you do share views when, on the occasion where you meet, where, you know, a player gets left out. He tells his agent. His agent tells somebody else. Or, you know, he tells his whatever, and that person tells someone else. So this notion of knowledge getting out, we, we're all aware of that, and we all do our best to ensure, when I started, when I started at Leeds, I'd frequently tell them the team on Monday. By the time I finished, I'd have to review that decision. Mm -hmm. Because the network was such that the team being known by someone else removed a slight advantage. So the advantage I got from telling them and then them then going rolling up the sleeves and said, oh, it's us, it's we, you know, uh, uh, was lost because, so you're constantly dealing with this problem of, of 
information that you don't want to get out, getting out. And that's always been the case. Mm. Mm. Yeah, interesting. Definitely. Um, so obviously, Howard, we're coming to the, the final part of the current season. And um, obviously, you've been in, in the, the same sort of situation with Leeds United, um, you know, going for, the, going for the title at this part of the season. What do you kind of think could be going on in the player's head? What, what would you say to the team, you know, going into the last six games? Obviously, off the back, I mean, we're recording this uh, on a, a Monday afternoon. On Saturday, we, we had a, a disappointing defeat. Um, well, there's two, there's two ways of looking at this. Uh, there's two examples. One is um, you you you, ha you look at you look at you look and they look at what it is got you where you are, and where you are is with a chance in the running. So it's a question of can we repeat the standard we've already created. And can we repeat it? But in repeating it, can we? Can our performances be the better ones? Mm. So it's not. It's not that much. It's these little things. Yeah. And even then, luck comes in. I talked to you. We went down to Bournemouth. Uh, three of us can get promoted: Newcastle, us, and Sheffield United. Mm. We win, we're up. We draw, Newcastle win. Mm. Or we lose, Newcastle win, they're up. You know, there's, there's four or five results there. Mm. So we've prepared, prepared perfectly. You know, we, we're going to go around Bournemouth on Thursday. We play a game of, of softball. Vinny hits the ball, flows the bat behind him, smacks the midfield player in the place, face, broken cheekbone. <laughs> Bobby Davison gets a knee injury and I say to him and the physio you can't tell anybody about this you are fit you are starting Saturday you must not tell anybody so you've got that one because the one you would like to start Saturday if you start him Saturday he'll waste 25% of his engine between now and then thinking about the start on Saturday. <laughs> so you're going to, Bobby Davidson's going to start, then this player's going to come on. Might be three minutes into the game, might be four, might be five. So you think, okay, get dealt with that one. Then on Saturday morning, the policeman comes to you, who's in charge of the policing and says, I'm sorry, we're going to have to bring the coach travel forward to quarter past 12, cost you 17 or 1200 in the ground, but there's 15,000 or 10,000 outside the ground. There's only one way in and they're already there and we won't get the bus through. So we're going to need a lot of time. You know, <laughs> <Saturday>. <laughs> if, we, if we leave at quarter past one, like you, like you say, can't guarantee you I'll get you inside the ground before two. So I go, right, uh, give me 10 minutes. So I want the 10 minutes to let him think that I'm thinking about it mm. because I have made my decision. So I go back to him. I've given it a lot of thought. We're going to go at quarter past one. So he repeats his warning. I said, I know, yeah, I understand that. I said, but if we can't get through, it's my responsibility. We'll get off the bus and walk. And at the end of the day, we got within about, I don't know, four or five hundred yards can't remember and we did get off the bus which under normal circumstances wouldn't have been advisable imagine mm. getting off the bus at Anfield mm. yeah. and, and the lead supporters were supposedly but we got off the bus and the Dead Sea parted <laughs> and so it was a, a triumphal walk through uh, thousands of people all so you, you finish up with players getting in the dressing room mm having experienced something that's just wiped away all the concerns that there might have been. Um, so it comes off. Mm. But if we'd have drawn that game and not gone up, mm. whose fault is it? Yeah. 
well, what, what, you know, <laughs> you see what we had to do. Yeah. We had to get off and walk. And what a crazy idea that is. <laughs> Starting a player, he comes off after five minutes. <sighs> get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> Fine margins. Yeah, fine, fine margin. margins. <laughs> um, lots of questions that we've had on uh, different social media channels uh, from fans. Um, let's let's run through some of these uh, for you, Howard. Uh, uh, do you see anything in Bielsa's current team which is identical to your title-winning side? I haven't seen them enough in real life, um, and I certainly don't know a lot about the preparation so all I can do is judge the results and judge uh, what I have seen when I've watched them on television um, which is not is not is a lot but not enough so it would be I'd, I'd, I I don't know enough to talk talk like that with any authority I'd just be giving an opinion like a the spectator, I can't give a professional opinion, I don't know enough, but the results speak for themselves. Mm. So hopefully, if they can maintain that performance, they're gonna be in there with a the shout. But it is again, it's tight, like it was us, Sheffield United and Newcastle. Mm. And that. kind of following on with that, I mean, I, I, I don't know if you, you've seen much of him, but Pablo Hernandez has been um, well, has been one of the linchpins for Leeds United season so far. And a lot of questions came in actually, um, sort of referring to him uh, being very much similar sort of role to what Gordon Strachan was when you brought him in. So I don't know if you've seen much of him, but do, do you think there's uh, similarities well, I, the, there? The, the, I was unfortunately at Bill Fotherby's funeral um, last week. Uh, and because of that, I, I did meet people, mm. and people people talk about him uh, with great admiration. Um, so, but I've got to be guided by the experts, and the experts, mm. in particular, in in this case, is the manager, and he keeps picking him. Mm. Um, you just mentioned Bill Fotherby there. Uh, sadly, losing Bill Fotherby this year. How was your relationship working with him and what are your best memories of Bill? Uh, Bill, um, I was very lucky at least, this happened twice to me. I went to Notts County and at Notts County we replicated what is the situation now. I picked the team and the players and coached the team and blah blah blah. Jimmy Cyril was my conduit between me and the chairman. I didn't have to deal with contracts. If I identified a player, it was up to, Bill, uh, to Jimmy Cyril and the chairman, A, to decide whether we could afford that player, and B, then to do the negotiation, and so on and so forth. So my focus was just straight on the team. Um, at Leeds, it was very much the same. Within five, six months of, of getting to Leeds and agents were starting to come in, remember, I said to Bill Fotherby, Bill, uh, Bill Fotherby and, and Leslie Silver and Peter Gilman, who was a director, I said, look, I would rather you deal with that side of it. Rather than I'm on the phone dealing with this, that and the other, you do that, you negotiate that. Same with the selling. If they come on about would I be prepared to sell him? If my answer is yes, and I give you, Bill, the valuation, my valuation, it's up to you then to see what you can. Come back to me, but I don't want to spend hours on telephone calls doing this. That was one thing. The second thing was his ability to persuade people, as I've just get, told you the Gordon Strachan story, to p persuade people to... Uh, to open their purses, <laughs> which undoubtedly in the early days was a great help because in the early days we didn't own the ground. Uh, Leslie was supplying a lot of the funding um, and a lot of the things we wanted to do uh, to change things quickly. Um, there wasn't the money, but Bill went out and got it. Um, 
and and I mean at one, at one stage I got I got microphones suspended in the from the roof in the uh, especially in the cop and those microphones <coughs> if appropriate they broadcast the sound of the crowd but it was louder and so on and um, you know that that was that's a detail but but bill uh, bill do you think it'd be possible to leave it with me <coughs> i'll i'll have a word with a few people and and so and and he made it happen hmm. wow um, <laughs> that's clever <laughs> so, so well, he, 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 we needed to change things and we then and, and changing things sometimes when you go into a place, you know, you might have, you, there might be 15 things that you think, I need to change this, 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 and this. It's important to know what needs changing. And then it's important to say, what can I change quickly? Mm. You know, because quick wins help you at the beginning. Mm. So, <laughs> It's not necessarily the most important thing that needs changing that you try to change first because you think that's going to take me eight months and eight months is a long time from this first month when I'm trying to create a different mindset. Um, so it, it's, that's the most important change I need to make but it's not necessarily the one I can make quickest and, and when you start, it's the quick ones that you try to deal with. Mm. Because okay. pe people are looking for, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> New balls for training. Yeah. Oh. You know, and you had a few together. Yeah. And think, people think, oh, it's okay. Mm. <laughs> Wow. Like that. Um, one fan asks uh, a question. Can you ask uh, Sergeant Wilco who he thinks was his best signing? The fan goes on to say, I, I can't split between Strachan, Radaby and Martin. So who do you think your best signing was for Leeds United? Well, it, it, it's... Best signing? Tough one. Mm. I mean, you did have some great players <coughs> in, in your tenure at Leeds United. Um, yeah. Well, we had time well it would be yeah. easy. It would be easy to say Gordon Strachan. <coughs> mm, yeah. But there were. There were also unsung heroes. Chrissy Faircloth. Mm. Yeah. Chrissy Faircloth played when he shouldn't play. Again, Gary McAllister. Gary McAllister played. You would never have Gary McAllister down as the. As the tough belligerent. Blah blah blah, but <laughs> he would play. I've seen Gary McCarris on a treatment table on a Thursday afternoon, and I've looked at the ankle, and said no chance. I remember mm. one game it was at Knox County away. I said, he's got no chance to the physio, and Gary said, no, I'll be all right. <laughs> no, I'll be all right, and he was all right. So bringing something like that to the party when you're also probably one of the best passers in that division mm. and so on, uh, is a real bonus. Chrissy Fairclough was a centre-half who wasn't big enough to be a centre-half, but dominated that position. Chrissy Fairclough had a, a dodgy knee for the whole time he played. Chrissy Fairclough was a leader. He lived a life properly. He said the right things in terms of he wasn't afraid to speak his mind, but he never he wanted to shout her. Um, and he again, like Gary Speed, he did jobs that some people in in those days. On four or five occasions, I got Chrissy to go and mark, mark man to man mark someone. Peter Beardsley was the probably the most one the one that comes to mind. Mm. And because of that, we got results. And that's not easy mm -hmm. because the instruction is, I don't mind if you come off the pitch 
not having kicked a ball so long as he hasn't. Mm -hmm. Because if you said to the team, do we want to win this game Saturday? Or do we want to, as it were, play an enjoyable game? Then Chrissy Fairclough's answer might be on the second, on, but he, like the others, probably we'd like to play an enjoyable game and win. Yeah, but what if we've got a better chance of doing it if he does that? But that depends on him doing that, <laughs> on him changing from what he's doing to doing this job, which is a job for the team, which the experts will pick on, but nobody else. Mm. But afterwards, everybody knows, hey, listen, <laughs> hey, what do we owe him? Mm. I mean, some of the time, it, it's, it, it's, I, I've, not many, there was only four games, I think. But it would be 20 minutes before anybody reali really realised what were going on. What? And by that time, you've maybe got what you want. Mm. <laughs> so it's, it's a difficult one. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> it certainly is. When you start to look beyond just the, yeah. what everybody thinks best signing, everybody thinks best signing, best player, blah, 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 blah. But what's the best player? Mm -hmm. Then when you start to look at that and you start talking about what you expect of a fullback, what you expect of a centre half, what you expect of and so on. Mm. I mean, I lost count of the number of times I heard comments about Lee Chapman not being this, not being that, not being the other. But whenever he played for me, he averaged a goal every two games. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. They'd, they'd want that now, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we could do that. I, now, I would yeah. say. Could do it. I would be happy. Um, question here What did you think uh, when the club was going through financial meltdown during the Ridsdale era and the, and the collapse of the club? What were your thoughts then? Well, that whole, that whole saga was. was Look, I, I was in at the start of that and uh, I paid the price when Caspian bought the club. And the chairman afterwards always expected his regret, Leslie Silver. Within about 18 months, he'd told me that he wished it had never happened. It was a time when clubs thought that was the way to go, um, but undoubtedly, OK, there was the Champions League semi-final. But when you look at where they were, and then we look at where they were afterwards and what was the, the trigger, well, it, it, that was really the trigger, um, which created... I mean, whatever you think, with the benefit of hindsight, I know, but... The, the three who were running that football club ran that football club properly. Mm. Mm. They ran it properly and for the right reasons. Mm. They ran it because they want Leeds United to be a good team. Yeah, I'm coming in a minute, look. Uh, yeah, we're still negotiating. The fee at the, fee at the moment... Twenty-five thousand pounds. Because with the, they're paying me by the minute. <laughs> well, we're nearly. Yeah, we're pretty, actually, pretty much wrapping up. We've yeah. got um, uh, w one more uh, thing to to hand yeah. you. Actually, have one of one of our uh, sponsors, the Terrace, um, do uh, uh, Leeds United memorabilia, and they've created a bespoke one-off. Howard Wilkinson, Leeds United mug, purely for yourself in the in the colours from the '92 uh, uh, kit for you the, as well. The training kit. So, <laughs> it's confirmation of what everyone felt <laughs> that I was a mug, am a mug, <laughs> and I've got my mug to prove it. <laughs> well, Howard, we we put the um, the word out that I was interviewing you on on social media, and, and it, it got a huge response by obviously all Leeds fans, and 
the amount of questions that came in, but also the amount of comments that I just wanted to thank you for your time at the club. And, and as a Leeds fan, I want to obviously thank no, you thank as well. You. Thank you. And thank That's you very much very for this in, interview today. It's, no, no. Um, it's been a real honour and pleasure for us. And, and I'm sure all our listeners and fans are, are going to enjoy it as much as me and Darren have. Definitely. Thank you very well, let's much. Let's hope so. Yeah.